Often, legends emerge as a result of inspiration. And inspiration can come from most anywhere, at any time. For instance, 1950s America. Many remember it as a decade of promise, of optimism, a time of uniformity and conformity. With this post-war mindset came tremendous economic growth. Popular culture was defined by profound change. As World War II GIs returned home, this overwhelming sense of optimism naturally led to a yearning for family. 2.5 children, a house with a white picket fence, and a fabulous car. Automotive fever boomed in the 50s. Highways and driveways were suddenly populated with chrome, white walls, and tail fins. While a positive mindset was fueling change, the oil and gas industry was being fueled by fierce competition. Drilling contractors were competing head-to-head -head for contracts. The leaders in this industry were determined by who could drill the deepest and fastest. Yet, there was an overriding concern for the availability of domestic reserves as gasoline consumption grew with every new car sold. The oil industry understood the potential represented by offshore drilling, but to many, the challenges were too great. But there was one company where even the most challenging problems were welcome, a place where there was a great deal of original thinking going on. R.G. Laterno Inc. in Longview, Texas. And much of that original thinking was coming from Mr. R.G. Laterno himself. Uh, he was the man to admire. His, his work ethic and his ready to meet challenge. That was, that was the main thing that I remember. Is, you know, if you got something you need to do, just try to figure out a way to get it done. He, most people called him Mr. R.G. You but that was our son, they just called him R.G. If you knew him mighty well, you called him R.G. Out of respect for his age, if nothing else, I called him Mr. R.G. And I learned a long time ago that the ditch digger out there's opinion to him was just as important as the King of England was to him. And you ought to listen to each one and profit by what you can learn because you learn from all of them. And the old man was like, he wasn't better than anybody else, wasn't worse than anybody else. I'm sure in his mind, he just done the best he could and didn't mistreat anybody. He wanted to get the job done. He was enthusiastic. Like many other industrialists of his time, R.G. Laterno was intrigued by the prospect and challenge of offshore drilling. And in his typical fashion, he set out to solve the problem, letting nothing get in his way. Laterno and his engineers took what they had learned from heavy equipment manufacturing and applied it to meeting the challenges of the sometimes unpredictable offshore environment. They took their ideas and their enthusiasm to leaders in the oil and gas industry. And it was this innovative spirit that first caught the eye of the management of Zapata Offshore Company, most notably its president, Mr. George H.W. Bush, the future 41st president of the United States. R.G. made quite an impression on the young CEO. Bush described Laterno in his autobiography, Looking Forward. He was, quote, a kind of George Patton of engineering. He'd come to us with a proposition. He'd build the Scorpion at his own expense. We'd advance him $400,000 refundable if the completed rig didn't work. If it did, he'd get an added $550,000 and 38,000 shares of Zapata offshore common stock. Our feeling was that anybody who had that much confidence in himself was worth the gamble." End quote. He was an inventor. Uh, mm -hmm. He was, uh, I mean, his mind was so fertile with new ideas and concepts. But there ain't no doubt about it, he was a boss. He took pride in his workmanship and he, and he rubbed off on his employees. 
then when the offshore business came along, he was approached on that. That was a challenge to him. It was a challenge to everybody. Nobody had ever done this before, large scale. So he was up to the task right down his alley. Letourneau wrote at the time that, quote, we made a deal that I believe is unique for untested equipment running into so many millions of dollars, end quote. In fact, with the need to overcome the design constraints of conventional shallow water platforms, many in the oil industry considered the construction of the Letourneau platform to be a foolhardy move, if not an impossible one. But that didn't stop R.G. Letourneau. And on November 11th, 1954, Work began on the first mobile offshore drilling rig, a rig that was to eventually be christened the Scorpion. There wasn't any challenge around here that you didn't try if you, if you didn't want to, and that was one of the good things about working for Letourneau, is you learned a lot because you had the opportunity to tackle different different things. See, that hull of the, the Scorpion was made out of tubes, big round tubes. Uh, made, 20 foot diameter tube, half, half, to... inch, uh, half inch thick material. We rolled it and welded it together. Yeah, but you didn't have no prefabricated stuff. You just took the pipes and put them in the legs one pipe at a time. He was very trustworthy of the people. He depended on them to, to be thorough and accurate. Finally, construction was complete. The finished platform consisted of two 20-foot diameter barge-like hulls, three 140-foot lattice-type steel legs, and a 24 by 28-foot derrick slot. And in December 1955, the 4,000-ton platform walked into the Mississippi River. The prevailing question is, how are we going to get this thing in the river? And Mr. Letourneau says, we'll worry about that when we get it built. <laughs> There was no launch way. There was no uh, idea of how to launch it. They tried everything with it. We they, had they hosed the, tree rollers they hosed the bank on, down, yeah. put grease on <laughs> We put it on a big slope like that. First time we had it almost flat, trying to put it in there with winches on the deck, put some scrapers down in the Pushing river it down there, hooked, uh, hooked the cables off on, and we had tree stingers they push, push, push up trees on both sides of it, pushing on it, and uh, everything it could get around it, pushing on it. The rig was officially christened the Scorpion on March 20th, 1956 in Galveston, Texas. With this, Letourneau presented the three-foot key to the Gulf to Zapata. The Scorpion went to work, drilling its first well for Standard Oil Company of Texas off the coast of Port Aransas. However, the rig initially experienced challenges. After a failed jacking system caused Gulf salt water to creep into the Scorpion's gearboxes, Letourneau still remained unfazed. Bush observed, quote, Letourneau didn't go back to the drawing board. He came over to the deck itself. We watched incredulously as he looked at his monster's legs then at the rack and pinion gears. Then right there on the steel deck, he pulled out some chalk and sketched the changes that had to be made. No engineer's drawings, not even a slide roll. But it worked, end quote. Uh, Hands-on management, he was into everything. The financial part of the business, the engineering part of the business, the construction part, the methods of construction, every, everything, hands-on all phases of the business. There's no doubt about it, he was the boss. Period. He was always the boss. There was only one chief engineer. After a short stint in Galveston, the Scorpion moved to the Gulf of Mexico. 
Following several months of success in the Gulf, in June 1956, the Scorpion set a world record for drilling rig relocation by traveling approximately one mile under tow from one well site to another and started drilling a new well within eight and a half hours. Based on the success of the Scorpion, construction began on a second Laterno platform, the Vinegaroon, which was delivered to Zapata offshore in early 1957. Both the Scorpion and the Vinegaroon were brutally tested as they survived Hurricane Audrey in 1957, the only rigs on the Gulf Coast to survive the storm. Without a doubt, the 1950s was a decade of positive change. For the oil and gas industry, it was a time marked by innovation and inspiration. Thanks to the leadership of such visionaries as Mr. R.G. Letourneau and Mr. George H.W. Bush, the world's first offshore jackup rig, the Scorpion, became a reality. And because of rare foresight, unique vision, and good old-fashioned courage, the oil and gas exploration industry was revolutionized forever. Proud right, of workmanship. We trusted him. It was always an opportunity to learn something new in Letourneau. 